Welcome back to Stat Center, presented by the Michelson 20MM Foundation. I'm Robert Adut with yaymath.org. Tonight, a breakdown of sorts. No, it's not the latest Kardashian family drama. Instead, we're breaking down the differences between discrete and continuous distributions. Last night, David Beckham walked us through binomial distributions, showing us how to calculate the probability of making that all too pivotal soccer penalty kick. But what if the variable we wanted to measure couldn't be counted, but could only be measured? In our interview with legendary actor and basketball player Shaquille O'Neal, we separated variables into two basic types, qualitative and quantitative. Truth be told, we can classify quantitative data even further as being either discrete or continuous. Joining us once again for continuous insight on the subject is a man who needs no introduction, Shaquille O'Neal. Shaq, good to have you back. Sorry to see you still haven't visited my personal shopper, Robert. Shaq up. Can we get these people to stop talking about my clothes? Anyway, Shaq, discrete versus continuous variables. Walk us through the differences. Discrete variables are countable, like the number of shots a player makes or blocks in a game. Continuous variables, on the other hand, can't be counted, but are measured. Examples include a player's height or time in the 40-yard dash, Shaq Dabity down, or their weight. What I heard from Charles is you giving him a hard time about his weight too. That was a simple misunderstanding. We measure continuous variables on devices like scales or timers which may certainly include decimals, like your squad itself, at like what, 150 pounds, or 150.3 pounds, or 150.38 pounds. By contrast, the number of points a player scores can only be whole numbers, like my all-time career high of 61 points. Can you dig it? As you can see, continuous distribution creates a curve effect, reflecting the infinite number of values a continuous variable can be. But with discrete distribution, only whole numbers are possible, giving us that rectangle effect on the graph. So with continuous variables, we can think of probability as the total area under the curve. But for discrete variables, we're looking at the areas of separate rectangles, with each rectangle having a width of one, since we are counting by once, and the height of each rectangle being the probability of that outcome occurring. Not just eye candy after all, are you, Adut? Thank you. One major difference in the way we analyze the two types of distributions is in how we calculate probabilities. For discrete distribution, we can calculate the probability of getting exactly six or exactly seven. But for continuous distribution, we need to find the probability of a range of numbers. In this case, the probability of any value between six and seven. This range gives us the ability to calculate any area under the curve, and that area gives us the probability of the range occurring. If we tried to find the probability of an exact value, like six for example, that would be zero because the area of a straight line is zero. I understand that we can use formulas or built-in technology on calculators or even online resources to calculate the probabilities of continuous ranges. But what's important here is being able to differentiate between continuous and discrete variables and their graphical distributions. I couldn't have said it better myself. Buy blue chips on DVD right now. Shaq, it's good to have you back. Join us next time as we discuss the most famous continuous distribution of all of them and it's a lot more normal than you think. Ah, I'm Robert Adut. Keep it one standard deviation ahead of the curve, stats fans. Started at the bottom, I'm a whole team here. Started, started, started.